Let's talk about bunions, how to prevent them and how to get rid of them. Now the technical name for a bunion is hallux valgus. There becomes a problem in the big toe where the toe starts to malform in three different directions. It tends to bend towards the other toes, rotate, and then elevate. Now, the big problem with this is that it can become inflamed, tender, and it really affects your gait, your ability to walk, your ability to exercise. And so you're constantly shifting your weight on other parts of your foot and ankle. And then this throws off the symmetry of your muscles. And now you might end up with knee pain or hip pain uh, because of the compensation. So what are the causes of this problem? Well, there's three main causes. One is that your shoes that you wear uh, are not uh, fitting your feet correctly. Maybe the toe is too pointed, maybe the shoe is too narrow, and this is causing your big toe to kind of go inward. Unfortunately, these fashion shoes today are not designed to keep your toes nice and open and straight. So the first thing you need to look at is uh, your shoes. Um, the best thing to do when you're buying a shoe is to take the bottom of the shoe and then match your foot to see if there's space enough for your toes. And if there isn't, you're gonna to have to find some shoes that actually can really give your toes some space. Now, that's not necessarily gonna correct this problem, but it can definitely prevent the problem. Now, number two, um, having flat feet, like myself, can create a problem with the big toe. Because there's no arch, you're constantly shifting the weight forward to the toes, especially the big toe. And then that can affect the dynamics of how you step. And then the foot flares out. And now we have a lot of pressure in that toe. And so now the toe starts going outward this way. And number three, just simply having ankle mobility issues. That could come from an old injury to uh, your ankle or your foot, which then it caused compensation or it can be from having an aroma on your foot or a heel spur or any number of reasons, including overtraining, uh, maybe as a child with some type of exercise. So the solution is gonna be involving putting flexibility back into the ankle, which is a lot of the calf muscles that we're gonna be dealing with. So let's just dive right into it. Okay, so number one, if you have shoes that are not fitting correctly, you need to, you need to get some shoes that do fit your toes. And this also includes getting socks that are not too tight around the toes. They have socks now that individually fit your toes and that might be a really good type of sock that you should get. So this way you keep that separation. Okay, number two, there is something called silicone toe spreaders, okay? So this is just a simple device that you can put these uh, little spacers between your toes to keep the separation and you would wear these a couple hours in the evening to help start to spread the toes. And number three, the exercises, which is probably gonna be the most important thing to focus on. Now, the first exercise you wanna do is focusing on rotation of the foot. You're gonna be making circles of the foot. There's a, a really good exercise um, that you can do where you're sitting in a chair and you're bringing your knee up with your arms, okay? So you're isolating the lower leg, and then you're gonna to try to draw a complete circle with your toes clockwise, okay? And you're just gonna go slowly to focus on the form to make sure you get that complete circle. And you're gonna notice that it's, it's actually difficult to do at first because there are certain muscles that are too tight and other muscles that are too atrophied or loose. But doing this circular exercise will start to put in uh, symmetry into that ankle. So you'd simply start with like 10 rotations clockwise with your right foot, okay? And then do 10 counterclockwise with your right foot. Then you would switch to the left foot and do 10 clockwise and 10 counterclockwise. Focusing on doing this slow and doing a complete circle without involving uh, using the leg. So you wanna really isolate that ankle so you're not rotating the entire lower leg. So. That would be one exercise to start with and do this each day. The second exercise I'm gonna recommend would be just standing on a tennis ball for two minutes. Now you're gonna to have to work up to this, but you, you make sure the tennis ball is right in the um, mid part of the arch and you do one foot at a time and you're standing and you're putting all this pressure on the arch. And this is really important for people that have flat feet. This will start to take pressure off these muscles that are really too tight and give you a lot of relief. 
So what we're trying to do with these exercises is put symmetry uh, back into the ankle joint and muscles that are related to that. So when you're walking, you're not favoring certain muscles, and then this will allow the toe to come back. Now, realize that the, the, what's holding this thing in a certain position is the muscles. So what you're doing is you're correcting the muscles, the ligaments, and the tendons. So when you're standing in a tennis ball, you, know, you might only be able to do it for 10 seconds. So you're gonna gradually start working up to being able to do it for two minutes each foot once a day. All right, the next exercise would be toe raises, okay? And you wanna start sitting in a chair and you're simply gonna raise your toes up both left and right at the same time. So, and this is gonna to start to strengthen a muscle called the anterior tibialis, which are the muscles on the front part of the leg, the shin muscles. And you wanna work up to just doing these 30 times, okay? 30 times. If you start to cramp, obviously stop and do what you can. But we're trying to strengthen on a nice, slow uh, gradient level, the front part of the muscles in the lower leg, okay? So you're gonna be sitting in a chair and raising up your toes. These are called toe raises. And I recommend working up to like 20 of these, okay? So you might be able to start with 10 and then go 20 and then 30 over time. And then once you get good with that, you can graduate to doing this standing. Um, you're gonna be positioning yourself on a wall. So you're at maybe a certain uh, degree, like maybe you're doing 30 degrees on a wall and you're gonna be lifting up your toes that way. And I put a link down below of a really good video just to kind of give you more information about that. So if we're gonna be working on the muscles on the front part of the leg, now we need to work also on the back part of the legs. So this would be calf raises, okay? Stand up straight, then push to the balls of your feet and raise your heels until you are standing on your toes. So start on a chair, back and forth, working your way up to 30 repetitions. And then when you get good with this, then you would start doing it um, just standing up, okay? And you might wanna hold a chair or the wall as you do these calf raises. You, know, you wanna work up to 30. Now, what you're gonna find is the muscles um, and the calf are gonna be a lot stronger than the ones on the front part of your shin. And this is why it's gonna be a lot easier to do the calf raises than the toe raises. But I want you to do them both. And then what you're gonna find is you're gonna be basically strengthening the weak link, which is the front part of your leg, the anterior tibialis. And that's gonna give you a lot of relief on the big toe. And the last exercise would be where you're gonna be inverting the ankles, okay? As well as everting the ankles. So you're gonna rock them back and forth while you're sitting in a chair, okay? You're gonna work up to 30 times. Then when you get better with that, you can do this standing. So these exercises uh, cover all the dynamics of the motion in your ankle. And over time, it's gonna really put symmetry back into both feet. Now, let's say for example, you just have more inflammation in one big toe, okay? Not both of them. If you wanna get some instant relief on that, a very simple thing to do would be to massage the opposite toe exactly where it's hurting on the right side or the left side, you work on the exact opposite side. And as you press into the opposite uh, big toe joint, okay, on the mirror image side, you're gonna find it's very, very tender, but it's gonna give you a tremendous amount of relief on the side that's actually hurting. Now, of course, you wouldn't wanna do this if it's on both sides, bilateral. You would only wanna do that procedure if it's on one side. However, if you do have it on both sides, what you can do is start massaging with lotion on the inside uh, space between the big toe and the second toe, right where you have this little web between the two toes, go down a little bit further towards the arch, and you're gonna find some areas that are very, very tender in between the first toe and the second toe. I would do that type of massage on both feet. It will give you a tremendous amount of relief as you're correcting these bunions. All right, so now that you have the basic information, the best video for you to watch next is my one on flat feet. Check it out, I put it up right here.